Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to be crocheting the scrubby edge dishcloth together. This is a classic solid granny square made with cotton yarn, and then I've added this fun edge of the scrubby cotton to that, and that gives it uh, kind of like a, a wash, a dishcloth to wash with, and then if you have some stuff you need to scrub, you can kind of pick up this edge and use it to scrub. We've also added a handy hanging loop so when your dishcloth gets used you can hang it up to dry and it's optional. I'm going to show you how to both add it or if you want to leave it off. It's totally up to you. Each dishcloth measures about 9 inches by 9 inches. However, I'm going to show you later on in the video if you want to make yours bigger, make it more oversized, or if you want to make it a small kind of handheld scrubber for your kitchen as well. So this is a fun dishcloth and the first dishcloth in our Summer of Dishcloths crochet along. So I'm really excited. We're going to have dishcloths in the every week during the months of July and August. So this one was kind of kicking off our crochet along and I'm super excited. We have lots of them planned really fun just called. So without further ado, let's get started and jump right into our project. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to measure as you go along. We're also going to be using the 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook, which is what we'll be using for all of our dish cloths along the way for this crochet along. The yarn that we'll be using for this dish cloth is the Scrubby Smoothie for the main square part of our dishcloth. And then the scrubby edged accent, we're gonna be using a yarn called Scrubby. So this is part of a line. There's a Scrubby, Scrubby Smoothie. There's a, even a Scrubby Sparkle. But we're gonna do the middle part of our square with the smoothie and the scrubby edge with the scrubby, okay? So we're gonna kind of pair these up. I'm gonna put the this uh, bright pink this is called Glacier. We're going to put those together. I'm going to be doing the green. This green is called Lime, and I'm going to put this with the Primrose. I thought those looked pretty together. And then the Caribbean, I'm going to put with this one is called Lemony. So, um, I'm sorry, the Lemony is the, the smoothie. This one is called Ducky in the, in the Scrubby, okay? So, uh, now obviously you don't have to use all this yarn. We're not going to use up all this yarn. Um, we're going to use some of this yarn for some of our other dish cloths as well. You could make yours in all one color. You don't need to get all these colors. But if you want to, it's completely up to you. Um, but we're going to start this tutorial by making the square part first. And then I'm going to show you how to add this fun scrubby edge so you can have this great multi-purpose kind of dish cloth. So we've grabbed two of the colors that we mentioned earlier. We're going to need a smooth one for the main part of the square, the smoothie, and then the more scrubby edge for the outer edge when we're finished. So we can slide this out of the way because we're going to work on the square first. So I got the green and the purple. I love green and purple together. Okay, so what we want to do first is put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your hook to make a uh, fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Next, what we're going to do is chain four. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. Now before we proceed, let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here a little bit more closely. And sharpen things up a little. There we go. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to form a ring and we're going to be working our stitches into the ring. So to join, we're going to go in the chain farthest from the hook, that very first chain we made. Insert your hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Pull things apart if you need to. And we're going to hold that tail along the edge as we work so that it weaves it in. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of rounds here. And then once we get a couple of rounds established, uh, it'll start to establish a pattern. Now as we grow our square, the sides of our square, we're going to have more stitches that get added onto it, but the corners will always be work the same. And you'll see exactly what I mean as we make our square. So for round one, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to work three double crochets into the center of the ring. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, 
wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. So that's one double crochet, and then two double crochet, and then three double crochet. If at any time you need to rewatch any portion of this video, simply just back things up and you can rewatch it as many times as you like. Then what we're going to do is chain two. One and two, and then we're going to work three double crochets into the center of the ring once again. One, two, and three. Push things over if you need to, create a little bit more room in your ring. Then you're going to chain two. One, two, then you're going to work three more double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay? So you can see we're starting to get a little teeny tiny square established. So what we need to do now is once again chain two. And then to finish up our square, we're going to work two more double crochets into the center of the ring. So one and two. Now if you remember, at the beginning of the round, we did a chain five. Now that chain five, the first three chains of that chain five counted as a double crochet. The other two chains of that chain five counted as, remember we did chain twos in between all these groupings? That's counting as that. And so those other two chains counted as, remember we did two chains in between each of these groupings? So that's why we only need to do two double crochets here. So you're gonna count one, two, three chains up and join with a slip stitch. So insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, okay? And now we have a little square. It looks like a little plus sign, okay? Let's get on to round two next, okay? We're going to stick with the same color. So what we need to do, we're almost to where we need to be. Um, actually, before we proceed, let's do this. Flip your square over. We're going to trim this tail just to get it out of our way. So pull it nice and tight. Get your scissors and trim and then you can flip it back over. I just like to get those uh, tails out of the way. Okay, so we're almost in the right spot. We need to be in this corner space here. Um, we're almost there. So go ahead and insert the hook into that corner space, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And now you're in the right spot to begin the round, okay? So what we need to do next is chain five. Once again, same, same way we did before. So one, two, three, four, five. Now as a side note, if you want to change colors, we're going to stick to a solid square for this tutorial, but if you wanted to change colors um, before you do the chain five, simply cut the yarn and fasten off and then you can tie the yarn right into that corner space and do your chain, okay? It's similar. Okay, so we're going to work two double crochets into the corner space. Okay, so this corner space here, work two double crochet. So one and two. Okay, now we have three stitches across. So this square is really, um, if you want to learn or kind of sharpen your skills on working into stitches versus spaces, this is a wonderful square for this because now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and we're gonna work into the stitches. So we have three double crochets here, this little group. We're gonna work into the stitches this time. So when you work into the space, you simply just work into the hole. When you work into the stitches, you're gonna work at this little loop. See this little tiny loop at the top here of each column? So the, the double crochet makes this column shape, which is called a post, and then at the top there's a little hole. That's the stitch. So work a double crochet into that first stitch. You have three stitches across that we're gonna be working into. So work a double crochet into the first stitch, a double crochet into the next stitch, and a double crochet into that last stitch, okay? Next, we're gonna work our corner. Now, as our square, I mentioned this earlier, as our square grows, these side stitches, the number of them is going to increase. 
but the corners will always be worked the same. So let's work that first corner. That's done by working two double crochet, one and two, then a chain two, one, two, and then two double crochet, one and two. Okay, that's our first corner. It's looking like the side of a square. The next thing we want to do is work a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Same thing we did on the on this side here. Remember that side? So work one, two, and three. And then we're going to work our next corner. Remember each corner is done the same way. Two double crochet, one, two, chain two, one, two, and then two double crochet, all in that same corner space, okay? So we're just going to work that corner the same way. Okay, now we're at a side again, and remember the sides are worked into the stitches, and there's three across. One, two, and three. Okay, then we're going to work our next corner, two double crochet, one, and two, remember chain two, one, two, and two double crochet on that corner space, one, and two. I wanted to give you a little tip. When you're working these solid granny squares like this, sometimes that first stitch of the side gets a little bit covered up by these stitches. So see how we have that column and then there's that little hole at the top? Sometimes it can kind of like cover it up a little bit. You might need to slide things over, okay? And that's perfectly fine. So work a double crochet into each of these side stitches. One, two, and three, okay? Okay, and then to finish up our square, we already have that chain there that's functioning as a double crochet, so we're just going to work one double crochet into that corner space to finish it off, just like that. And then, remember it was a chain five, so those first three chains, one, two, three, counts as our double crochet. So join with a slip stitch to close the round, just like that, okay? So round two is complete. So the rest of your rounds, you're pretty much going to work like the round we just did. So if you need to back it up, that's fine. Um, I'm going to work the next round with you just because we're going to be adding some side stitches. See how now, remember how before we did three, now we have a whole bunch more. Okay, so let's, let me show you. We'll just do one more round together and then we're going to kind of depart and work our dishcloth independently until we get to this scrubby, okay? So what we're going to do once again is chain five. Now remember, we're just repeating round two over and over and over again, adding those stitches, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, and then in the corner space, which is right here, work two double crochet, one, and two. Again, if you need to slow motion this, there's a little setting in YouTube that you can do that. And also, if you need to back up at any time, please feel free. Because we've already done this round, um, pretty much I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit, okay? Now, if you need to slide that corner over to see that first stitch, that's fine. Work a double crochet. Um, work a double crochet into each of these side stitches. So go all the way across with those side stitches, just like that. And I have to say as a side note, this particular cotton yarn is so super soft. Sometimes the cotton yarns can be um, stiff, and this one has just a really nice drape and softness to it. Okay, so we're at the end of the row and we're going to work that corner. So remember, two double crochet, one and two, and then we're going to chain two. One, 
two. Remember, the corners are always worked the same way. And then two double crochet in that corner space. One and two. And then we're back to a side once again. So work that first stitch and every stitch all the way across till you get to the next corner. You just keep that in mind. Um, you know, any rounds you can do without necessarily looking at the instructions. You might need to work a few rounds before you do that. But anytime you need to come back to the video is perfectly fine. I'm just working a double crochet in each one of these stitches all the way across. Then we're going to work our corner once again to double crochet, one and two, remember chain two, and then two double crochet all in that same corner space, one and two, and then we're at the sides again. So work a double crochet in each of the side stitches. One, and then another, all the way across those stitches. So by now, the difference between the stitches and the spaces is probably making more sense. And then we're gonna work our corner once again two double crochet, one, two, chain two, and then in the same space work your two double crochets, one and two. Now if we look at our square, we're coming up to the home stretch here, okay? We're getting a nice square And these uh, grannies, the solid and the traditional granny squares are so fun and happy. You're going to work a double crochet in that very first stitch and in every stitch across until you get to the corner again, okay? Now, I wanted to also mention that this pattern, because we're working rounds and building our square this way, you can make your squares as large or as small as you like. You can add lots of rounds and make a nice big oversized dishcloth, or you can work smaller rounds and make it like a smaller scrubby style. Okay, I'm just gonna work my last double crochet into that stitch. And then we're at the beginning, remember that chain five? You're gonna work a double crochet into that corner space. And then remember, count one, two, three chains up and join with a slip stitch to close the round, just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna leave my hook in because I'm gonna make my square bigger. But uh, again, you can make yours any size you like. I'm gonna keep going with mine and make my dishcloth bigger. I know some people prefer to have kind of like a handheld size. Some people like a really large one that they can fold up. So you can make this a variety of sizes. It's very customizable. But we, so far, we have a beautiful square. I'm gonna continue with round two over and over and over again. Now, as you can see, there's gonna be more stitches this time on the side. So just keep going until your dishcloth is as large as you would like it to be. And then we're gonna switch gears and put our little scrubby edge on there, okay? So stay tuned for that. All right, I went ahead and finished my square up. And I did a total of six rounds. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I really like this size. However, you can work as many rounds as you need to work to get your square bigger if need be. If you wanna make just a small little handheld scrubby, you can make it less rounds as well. It's very, very flexible. So what we're gonna do, this is where I fastened off. And we're gonna kinda of turn our square and we're gonna grab the scrubby cotton uh, to give it that scrub edge make it a scrub edge dishcloth. Now, if you want to, instead of fast, if you don't want the scrubby edge, instead of um, fastening off with the green here, you could just continue this last round in the cottony yarn if you'd like. If you wanna just give it a hanging loop, like we're gonna add a little hanging loop and an edge. You can just continue with this round in the regular cotton if you don't want the scrub edge, okay? So, tie your scrubby cotton into any of these corner spaces, just like that. We're just gonna tie it right on. And I'm going to weave this end in as I go. 
I'll save you a step at the end. Okay, so we're going to hold this along the edge as we work. Same thing we did when we began in the center here. Okay, so let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So insert the hook back into that corner space, bring up a loop, then we're going to chain one. Then we're going to work three single crochets into the corner space. So to do that, we're going to insert the hook into the corner space, bring up a loop, you'll have two loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. That's a single crochet. We're going to work a total of three. So that was one, then two, whoops, let's try that again. <laughs> okay, let's do two, and three, just like that, okay? Again, I'm holding that tail along the edge as I work. With the scrubby cotton, because it's so textured, just go nice and slow. Okay, that first stitch there, work a single crochet into that first stitch. Work a single crochet into the next stitch. The next stitch. We're just going to be doing this all the way across until we get to that corner space once again. So let's work these stitches together all the way across and then I'll show you how to do the next corner. Okay, still holding that tail along the edge as we work. You're just working a single crochet into every stitch all the way across, okay? Work your single crochet. Again, with this textured yarn, you we want to go nice and slow as you pull it through those loops. You don't want it to get all caught up in itself. Okay, I'm just going to grab a little bit more yarn here. Okay, we're now I've sufficiently, I just have a little bit of tail left, so I'm just gonna drop that tail, no big deal. And it's pretty much woven in and we'll just trim it later. So working those single crochets. All right, now we're approaching the corner space and we're just gonna do what we did at the beginning of our round here. We're just gonna once again, oh wait a minute, just have a few more, one more stitch left to work into. Um, we're just going to work three single crochets into that corner space. Now we've also come to another tail. So anytime you come to a tail, just hold it along the edge like that. So work your three single crochets into the corner space. Okay. Now we're going to continue all the way around doing the same thing. So work a single crochet in each stitch across, three single crochets in the corner. Work a single crochet in each stitch across, three single crochets in the corner. I'm going to go ahead and work those stitches, and then we'll rejoin at the end of the round over here, and I'll show you how to finish off your dishcloth and to add a really awesome hanging loop to let it dry. Just coming up to the end, I'm just going to work that last single crochet, and now we can join. So you might have to feel around a little bit, but just join with a slip stitch to close in that stitch that's kind of closest to your hook if you need to feel for it. So what I did was I inserted the hook, bring, brought up a loop, and then bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Okay, let's work a hanging loop. The hanging loop is completely optional. If you don't want the hanging loop, you can simply cut the yarn now and fasten off. But if you want the hanging loop, what we're gonna do is chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then what we're going to do is bring it back down and then locate about the center here. And you're going to just insert the hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And we now have a cute little hanging loop. Okay? So grab your scissors next. We're going to cut the yarn and then you can fasten off. So wrap it around the hook and just pull it through. Okay. 
So next, we're going to deal with all these little ends that we have. You may have one on your dishcloth. You'll definitely have one where we just left off. So let me just zoom out a little bit and we'll grab our tapestry needle over here. And then what you're gonna do is just thread your tapestry needle and then flip it to the back. Remember, this was the side facing you while you worked. So flip it over to the back side. It looks just as pretty on the back, but it does have a, a front and a back. And then we're just gonna weave the, this pink into the pink. We're not gonna go down into the green because it'll show. So go in one direction with your needle, come back in the other direction, just like that. And then you kind of pull it through. And it's very textured, so we have to give it a little strong little tug there. And then you can take your scissors and just give it a little trim and straighten things out. Now I have another end I'm gonna weave in as well. And then remember this one that we wove as we went along? You can just give that a little tug and trim. Okay, our dishcloth is complete. We have this fun hanging loop, the scrubby edge, and I went ahead and made some other fun colors. So this is a really fun pattern to play around with colors as well. So you can make a set of these. You can make them all in one color. It's completely up to you. This makes a great gift. You can make up a set as a gift or some for your own kitchen to add a little bit of color and fun. And they're very uh, utilitarian as well. So that is how you crochet the scrubby edge dishcloth. Now stay tuned because every week over the summer in the months of July and August, we're going to have a new dishcloth pattern every week. So stay tuned for that. And this was our very first one. So I'm very excited to kick it off with these fun dishcloths. When you make your projects along with us, use the hashtag FiberFluxCal, and I'll put that above, to share your work and we can see what everybody's making. If you haven't joined the Ravelry Crochet Along group, and I'll put the link down below, please hop on over there and join the community of makers. I have some year-long cowls going on, three of them to be exact. We also have our summer cow going on right now. We're just at the beginning. You can make all the dishcloths. You can make some of your favorites or just one favorite. It's completely up to you. It's a very fun, kind of easygoing crochet along, and I have some fun dishcloths planned. So you have lots of dishcloths to stock up your kitchen or to kind of tuck away as gifts as the holiday season approaches uh, many months from now. So stick with us, crochet along with us, and next week we'll have another brand new dishcloth pattern. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.